Hello, welcome to another episode of All Gathered Up, the show that runs parallel to the great British sewing bee. And it goes into detail of the topics or the techniques that come up every episode. And we do that because we've got a lot more time. Uh, this is obviously very heavily cut into an hour, whereas we have a bit more time and, and we can go about it in a much more relaxed proper method and as you know we can also only do it because we have the expertise of carol elaine master taylor couturier with us good evening carol good evening happy friday Stuart. here we are oh, again i know aren't we and and we've recovered from our amazing live last week haven't we that was good fun. I think Wasn't that went it? really well with lovely comments. And Absolutely. Uh, may, like you said, maybe we can try that again and have some I, um, live, live chat. I think so, because the amount of questions that we were able to talk through uh, was, was, was huge because we, we had mm -hmm. question and answers on the topic that we were looking at. And then we also had a, a question and answer at the end on generic questions and as well as talking through the uh, the pieces that the sewers had made that episode. It was great. All, and all live live with the people in the chat too. So it was great. Uh, thoroughly That's enjoyable uh, uh, connecting with the audience uh, in that way. But we're back to being recorded. Well, we're still recording live here. We don't edit the show. We're, we're, we're getting pros at this. Um, but we upload and you're watching it recorded. But yes, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do another live. Um, as we come to the end, we're at the quarterfinals, Carol. Where have the last seven weeks Absolutely. gone? I, I don't know. It's 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 time is erasing. But, uh, <laughs> isn't it? It's getting it's it's getting exciting now, isn't it? You know, uh, we're, we're we're down to the semis um, next week, yeah. and and pretty soon we'll have a winner. So it's it's been a great series uh, this and this time. See series nine. Absolutely. And talking about mm. exciting, mm. I know you've got some exciting things coming up for mm. our viewers maybe can you give us a little mm. insight uh because i think we're going to talk mm. like, we're going to talk about it properly next week aren't we but can you tease our viewers just a little bit of a soup song i think um we don't have a lot of time because we try to keep our shows here all gathered up limited to an hour and a bit and i think i'd like to show a bit more about some of these techniques so i thought if our viewers want to cooperate with with us and i'll show you a few tips today that are it's a smaller version of what i what i'd like to do so maybe we could put together some master classes which are a bit longer and explore that what do you think i i think that mm. will be brilliant viewers what mm. do you think mm. it's i uh, yes let us know in the comments if it's something mm. you're interested in but yes having a master class with you um because i've already signed up <laughs> um, <laughs> will, will be wonderful to develop your sewing skills even more at a much slower pace uh and having mm. specialist classes um all i think digitally as well mm. so not necessarily having to travel so if you're in texas or you're in sweden you'll still be mm. able to do it that's the wonders of technology isn't it carol oh definitely and and also you know augmented with the chat so we'll have a moderator yeah. and if people have a question they can tap that in and we can do we can you know do this live um we had a great success when we offered a master class to the winner of series eight we did and that was we? good fun and it went really well didn't it because Absolutely. we were talking about making a coat you know making a bigger garment and how yeah. you line it and how you cope with you know a large garment you know going through the you know the small press of foot um so that was such a success and we've been thinking about it Stuart. and i thought well maybe we can put together a little series I, I think it's going to be brilliant. Mm -hmm. So watch this space. Uh, tune in mm -hmm. next week where everything will be on offer to you with a little application form if it's something you're interested mm -hmm. in. So there we go. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's talk about this week's episode then, mm -hmm. which was based on the uh, film icons. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think the icon which we're going to be looking at was the uh, what they classed the breakfast at Tiffany's dress wasn't it so we're going to be looking at uh lining and invisible sips is that right carol 
That's right, because those are two of the challenges which I, I saw where you can get unstuck or you can make an error and, and then that dress comes out not as accurate as you'd like. Yeah. But while we're going to be talking about accuracy oh. and, and using the right terms for things, um, I wanted to start by looking at, well, what, what do you want? Do you want to talk about the, the, the dress first? Yeah, I'll, and get, then, I'll yeah. get the picture of the pattern up because I think that will help give the context, won't it? So let's jump to, it was in the pattern challenge. Oh, there's Mia's. Let's change there's back Mia's, yeah. um, to <laughs> the there so uh that was the pattern that they were given mm -hmm. um and that's that the, the classic uh, little black dress that she wore isn't it that's it that's it so we've got we've got a slim skirt gathered into the waist of the bodice we've got a front yeah. and a back and then we have that um a, a, a little scallop <clears throat> in the back which then is put together using this burrito method. Oh, yes. So, and then a, an invisible zip on the side. So they want you to use a, a, a tricky fabric to sew with, something that's hard to control, silk satin or synthetic satin. The bodice is fully lined in, and then it has that that smile, that sling in the back yeah. that's connected that's, upper that's bodice and lower bodice. There's no picture there of mm. the back, but they, as always, they have a pre-made one which is mm -hmm. trying to show the audience of what the bees are going to be creating mm -hmm. in reality. Let's have a look mm -hmm. at that. Um, and I can mm -hmm. show you, um, uh, let's get rid of that and that. So that's the, the mm -hmm. smile yes, back, as you the say, it's the scallop. Yeah. It's very clever, isn't it? Now, I can point out something here. Um, if you if you look at the upper back bodice, that that smile, that sling, uh, which is fully lined in, and yep. that's put together using the burrito method in that very small horizontal seam, which connects the top of the uh, back bodice to the bottom, and it's it's all sandwiched in, and then you'll see. I'm sure the viewers already know what I'm talking about, but it's turning that right side out. Yeah. And it depends on how much muscle you use and how, if you're tugging away at it, then that lower edge of that smile is going to stretch. So if ah. you look over the left shoulder, you yeah. can see, there you go, you see those yeah. waves. And that's what happens. It's an unstable curve of the fabric. Yeah. So it, you know, if you're going to be too rough with it, then... Well. That's one thing that could, that can happen. Let's let's quickly then, whilst we're talking about it, because it makes sense. Let's have a look then uh, at a couple that I've got ready. Uh, let's have a look at mm -hmm. Asthma's back, and then we can ah, there you go. See, there's a little mm -hmm. you see bit yes. there. Um, yes. Let's have a look at Lauren's back. Yeah, I see yes. what you mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Mia's back next. Let's have a look at Mia's back. So hopefully this... Actually, that's yeah. not bad at all, is it? Not bad at all. But then again, over that... I guess it's the way, the angle that it's shot at, but you can see that just over the left shoulder again. Yeah. You've got that wave. Now, there's a way around that, and you could add a stay stitch, a stay tape to that to, to control it. Ah, So that's right. one way to Let's avoid go. that. Let's go back to the uh, the model that they were showing. Um, and then I, I've got another pitch because they showed us the side. And I have to say, even with my limited experience, but of patchwork, you know, patchwork, we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're always we're sewing a square to a square and then another square mm -hmm. to a square. We're always mm -hmm. wanting to get a yeah. perfect mm -hmm. junction, aren't we? Even with my yes. experience of patchwork, yeah. I saw that. Um, there we go. OK. Here it is. That's even, right. So, even there, it's my yeah. eyes. Woo! Yeah. I think, I think everybody caught that. And I think at the beginning, when Esme was describing this, she had, her, she had one of her fingers over that junction. <laughs> and and yes. she was hiding it. And, and, you know, then, and they talked about what they expected. They expected perfectly balanced seams, smooth, yeah. no puckering. And obviously, it's all there. And you could see the rolling of eyes. Um, yeah. Also, the setup of that zip, it, it looks like it's a little bit far down from the faced edge, from the underarm there, 
uh, where you see the zipper pull seems a little bit low, um, not as accurate as it could be. So if this is the benchmark that we're going to be judging the contestants on, then it's difficult to pull them up on things like this. It, and I think... Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I just wanted to go through that before we, before we talk any more, and then maybe show a little few tips about putting in an invisible zip where you have a junction like that. And as I said, there isn't going to be time tonight uh, to go through everything, but maybe we can expand on that in a, in a later class. In the uh, future. Class. Absolutely. But you're right. Okay. When you're when you're wanting to sew, uh, and they are judging mm -hmm. them often, mm -hmm. aren't they, on their mm -hmm. their meat of their junctions and their points, yes. Uh, yes. to not see it on the the model that is showing everyone how it should be done is a little bit disappointing, isn't it? It it's it it confuses people because you yeah. think, well, that's build this, and then and then when they run into trouble, then they're caught up on it. Um, but, you know, you would commission a sample for this show. I doubt very much that the, the technician that had to produce this sample was under the same um, time no. uh, restrictions that, that our contestants are under. They probably had a lot more time to do it. But obviously they've got someone to do this sample whose level of skill is, is not as high as it should be. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. So you're going anyway. to just briefly explain this whole idea of the invisible sip, yeah? Yes, I've got a small sample ready. Um, right. I'll show you just a few things. I'll point out a, a few tips, and then um, and then we'll we'll move on. But we'll come okay. back to this later. All right. Let's uh, go with, to, with another ooh, show. You're, yeah, go to Carol Cam. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, All look right. at that. So, Beautiful. Now, can everybody see that there is a seam oh, yeah. running this way? Okay. Yeah. So what we're going to try to put in this zip. And here's the other side yeah. with the seam here. And just a couple of things that I would, I would say will be helpful. The first one is to align the top of the zip on either side exactly the same. So here, if I unzip it, I've got the top of this zip perfectly lined up with the edge of the fabric. Let's see yeah. Go this way. Okay. Yeah. So what we don't want when we're putting the zip on the other side is we don't want a displacement. No, you don't want it over or half an inch lower. That's right. This yeah. is, is this working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see the black. Right. Yeah, yeah okay. that's a, a massive. Right. Right. Yeah, we don't want yeah, that, so do we? Just yeah. be careful. And we had yeah. one contestant that had to chop off some excess. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first tip. The second tip is... Put, put the one, you know, put your left side of the zip in. Where you have a junction, okay, yep. this seam that runs this way, take a piece of chalk and mark it on your zip. Go all the way across, okay? Now you can see the mark I've made. Goes yep. all the way across. There it yep. is. Now you take the other side and just uh. line it up by eye yeah. on that chalk line. Make sure that, so that when you're, then when you go to the other side, okay. Yeah. It seems very straightforward that, doesn't it, really? Yes. Simple. That's yeah. it. Very simple. And yeah. then sometimes what I do is I'll, I'll line this up. Uh, so I'll unzip this. Now this is where that mark comes in handy because now I can line things up. Let's see, I'm going the other way. I can line things up. Um, yeah. And then sometimes I put a stitch. I get some thread and I put a stitch and I anchor it. Absolutely. Then I zip, yeah. then I zip it up again and make sure it matches. Okay. Yeah. The other thing is when you sew a zip, you're sewing in a certain direction. So this one I've sewn from the top of the zip down. Yeah. Now when you turn the zip, when you turn your work around, you, you... might be working the other way. You might yeah. be sewing from the bottom up. And your the very action of sewing it will drag this push. Yeah. over. Will push it over uh, you know, in a in a 
it will the zip will advance Move it. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Ahead of where you want the mark to be. Yeah. So that's why putting a stitch in where you have this juncture is is helpful. And then you can set your you can set your fabric before or behind, knowing that with the direction that you're sewing in will push that fabric yeah. into line. Okay, so it's just a few tips. We'll come back to invisible zips. We'll talk about them some more, and um, and I can then answer any other questions in greater detail. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It. It, so, when you say it like that, it makes so much sense because I I do that in patchwork when I'm when I'm putting uh, I've got a really big junction that I want to get right. Um, mm -hmm. I will it's it's kind of like a cheat, but it's I will just put it through the sewing machine uh, on a on a like a, a basting stitch just so on it's a there. Stitch. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and then I can check it. That's yeah. good, and then I can do the whole seam. Um, and then That's not it. worry about that centre where that junction, because that is, it, it, as, as you can see, when we go to that, um, you want that right, don't you? Because it will be noticeable. Well, you, oh, absolutely. That will, if, that will offend the eye every time yeah. anybody looks at it. That yeah. will, it, it will shout at you. Um, the, the downside of not doing this is you have to unpick. And if yeah. you're using silk <laughs> yeah. satin. Oh. And if you unpick. And if yeah. you unpick and get a fiber of silk satin instead of the thread, you'll pull, you'll create a pull, oh. a horizontal pull. And then you've ruined your then, fabric. And, yeah. You've ruined your fabric yeah. and this, you can't recover from that. So that's just one of the many obstacles in this dress. So, um, you know, did they have four or five hours? I mean, I would, I yeah. would spend all day on something like that Yeah. and I would yeah. make sure there was no pressure. So again, <laughs> A bit unrealistic if you carry this out, um, but anyway, that's the way the show is put together. It, it is, um, and and mm -hmm. and I I was talking to Ting about this. It is, it, it it's all about time, and that time is put in there to to make it easier for the judges to judge. So ultimately, when 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 they said, "Oh, well, you're going to have," uh, well, I think when they were talking about what issues they're going to be looking at, well, we'll be looking at the the. Um, uh, the invisible zip, and uh, and you just knew right. Okay, well that's going to be the issue then. So so mm -hmm. if they don't get that invisible zip right, or if they don't get that junction right, that's what's going to be talked about. And ultimately, I think it was talked about on nearly all of them, wasn't it? That's right. That's right. Um, I just completed a, a dress for a wedding in Portugal, oh. and I've sent you some pictures. Yes, yeah, we earlier look? just to sh <laughs> just to show. Um, here we go. So this was this was printed uh, as silk jacquard. It's very tricky. So there was a, there was a jacquard in the weave, and then also this beautiful yeah. summer print. And you can see that there is not one but two, because there was a midriff band in this. Oh. So the zip had to go in and cross. Yeah, look at yes, those there you go. You've two got it. Junctions. Yes. Yes. So that so, was tricky, and I did exactly what I I just talked through with you and you said you've done the same thing with your patchwork yeah. is I sewed the comfortably sewed the left side and then set up those two points on the right uh went all the way down and then um we added a kick pleat because oh, I love it. The, the 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 girth of the hem of this dress was getting narrower and narrower because she yeah. wanted a very slim look and I said well you're not going to be able to walk in it so <laughs> <laughs> then we added this yeah, we um, like a penguin but, uh, like a, hub, a Hubble skirt. Yeah, yeah. so let's, let's zoom that in a bit more and let's take another look at that zip from the top because that is... Oh, can I get any closer on that? I think that's... Uh, it's, I think it's a, at its biggest. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. But you can still so see also, that um, that zip right at the top there, viewers, can't you? Look right at, that, at the that. top. And it's yeah. just under the piping. So I piped the neckline and I piped the sleeves as well oh. to keep everything in line and flat on the body because you can ease your fabric into the piping. Right. You stretch the piping slightly and you ease the fabric in and it stayed very close, you know, close to the body that way. Um, but it worked out really well and I didn't yeah. need a hook and bar at the top. I just went straight, straight to the top and, uh, but this, so, what, did but we call, what did you, what did you call that middle uh, section? Uh, well, it's a, a mid, a midriff band. So okay. we had an upper bodice and a, and a lower bodice to the yeah. front and back. 
And if you look to the, I think, I, did I give you a front picture? There is a front, it's a bit smaller viewers, so I couldn't, um, there we go. Uh, I don't think I could, can I blow that up a bit more? It might pick. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Right. So the, yeah, the midriff is a little harder to see now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's, but is, anyway, it, um, is it there with the bow, is it? Yes. It's, yeah. Yeah. But it sort of comes to a V at the bow and then it goes out toward the oh, side. Oh, lovely. So it's kind of a hair, uh, kind of a hairpin idea. Yeah. Um, and then the bow, I sewed the bow on the, the top poppers, the, the male end of the popper. I, I used black to go with the, um, the, the purple of the bow. And then on the dress itself, I use silver. So just so if you're looking at on side, you wouldn't mm. see black poppers on, on, you know, on the side view. Um, but look anyway. at that fabric. That fabric is gloriously summerful, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's, it was beautiful. And uh, the supplier, Joel and Son, who we've talked about many times, was out of this print, but it was still on their website. And the customer want, saw it and wanted it. So they hurried up and got another roll printed for me in Italy. And it sat in customs for a little too long, it made it a oh. real nail biter at the end because we did the dress in three days. Um, oh. It's oh, one of the most frustrating <laughs> things about Brexit. Don't get me on yeah. about customs and and oh. uh, buying stuff from Europe, uh, fabrics, mm -hmm. wools, because a lot of our products yeah. are made in Europe, especially fine wools and fine fabrics. That's where they're woven, isn't it? That's so, right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, because yeah. so buying any. Yeah, we're not of that doing as now. much here, are we? No, no. Yeah. It's and, it is and, complicated. And it used to before Brexit, where you could buy something and then and it would be in the post from Italy or Spain. And three days later, boom, done. Now, yeah, mm. extra costs for customs, extra charges. Then it sits in customs. Oh, and it takes about three or four weeks sometimes with certain with certain deliveries. It's very very frustrating. Mm. So I I feel your pain there. But yes, love looking at that. And mm. you, you didn't mm. worry so much. You weren't thinking right pattern and it you're obviously not wanting to match but were you still no. concerned about placement at all or did you just cut and and see yeah i was i was concerned about placement but here's i wanted the style lines to be visible and if you pattern match then you miss all that the clever design lines oh, in it yes and Love also it. i had piping Piping yeah. goes on the bias of the fabric. So that was never going to match because it's no. a completely different grain line. And I thought about it. Um, you know, it perhaps if I just would have made a shift dress with the front on the fold and the back on the fold and a few darts, I, I could have then thought about pattern matching. But because this design had so many junctures mm -hmm. and, and interesting uh, shapes about it, I thought, no, I'm not going to pattern match. And Absolutely. then they'll show. Love it. So I think that is a, an effective use of the print, don't you think? Uh, absolutely. Mm. And as you say, I often think of that in patchwork. It's a very similar thing. In patchwork, do I want the fabric to sing when I quilt it? Uh, so therefore mm. doing very discreet quilting, or do I want the quilting to sing? Do I want to see those design lines? And I think that's mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying here. You want to really see those de design lines. So purposely yes. play around with it so those yeah. lines pop yes absolutely because you don't you're not seeing dresses like this with that no. kind of um in interesting cutting you're not seeing those um, no, I love it. On, on the rails in shops so you know just just to exploit it and, and the, the just the interest and the complexities of it and yeah do i and do also I, this do i yeah. spy there okay. is that a dart uh what that's you a got dart there? yes yeah yeah, so it's a very fit, very fitted garment. It is this one. beautiful. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Oh, love seeing, isn't it Thank lovely, viewers? Much. When you can see the work in action from mm. from the, the the master tailor at Anne. I love it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, wonderful, thank you. Carol. The, thank also, you. just one more one more thing yeah. to stabilize the silk. I interlined it as well. So I used a mull, a muslin, a very very fine. Ooh. woven cotton fabric which i pre-shrunk a couple of times and i made sure that it wasn't you know it, it was perfectly yes. sized 
and then it gave the dress a slight sponginess. Yeah. So it wasn't quite so flat. Oh, do you know, that's just reminded me something of that. Hold, hold that thought. I'm just going to get my shirt out okay. from last week. Hang on. Right. You were talking about... Um, oh, I need to plug myself Oh, in here again, we so are. Can... The masterpiece. Yeah. The masterpiece returns. <laughs> Uh, you were talking about interlining. Um, um, I don't know where... I love this. I, and as I said to you last week, this is now definitely the best thing I've made, even uh, compared to a lot of my heavy piecing that I've done in quilts and piecing numerous fabrics together and getting lots of complicated junctions. This still whoops that. But if there was one thing I'm just slightly disappointed about, and you might put me right, uh, right, right or wrong with this. I don't know, but your talk about interlining just made me think. So this is beautiful linen. It's wonderful, floppy. Do you mm. think I should have not interfaced my collar, uh, my button band, the button stand? Yeah. Um, because I, I don't think... know now whether that's just too. Everything's so soft and relaxed, and I'm, yeah. I'm now looking at that thinking, oh, I don't know whether that's just too formal, because it, it is a shirt, right. and uh, um, maybe yeah. with experience, I, I would have gone, because uh, remember I asked you about the, 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 the interfacing of the collar, mm -hmm. and you said yes. only interface what can be seen, so that would be the yes. collar. The top, the top, top collar. I did exactly that, and you are so true. It works, worked treat. Mm -hmm. There's still an element of casualness about it, and and it's not so stiff. But my, mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think? Okay, two things. What? Well, first, a question. Did you use a fusible product? I did. Yes. Okay, yeah. and did you use a light, a medium weight, mm. a heavier weight? I used weight? a firm. Yeah, I used a firm. There Damn. you go. So Damn. you could kick it, you could kick it down just what you know, yeah. just a, a, maybe one or two grades of weight. The other thing you could try is you could use what I we just talked about that more mus that muslin. So you could interline it with a non fusible product, okay, and mm -hmm. that way it doesn't s stick to every millimeter. So it it does give it a oh. more fluid effect. So the fabric done. kind of breathes a bit more. It's yes. not firm, starch, rigid. That's right. So you could use a lighter weight fusible, a featherweight, that gives it some structure because you yeah. want the collar to have structure. You want that front band to, to be neat as it, you know, as you see it from Absolutely. the neck to the hem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So should I cut it might, off and do it again? You might try on your neck. <laughs> Uh, you could remove the button stand, couldn't you? But I don't know. Wash it a few times because that might um, uh, soften it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but and, and that's the thing. Oh, sorry, my earpiece is all twisted now. <laughs> so uh oh, not, hang on to your accessories, what, Stuart. <laughs> one of the things I'm not used to, and that's the thing. The more you make, the more you learn, and you just go. Well, that's how we get better and how we develop. Um, we sometimes put too much pressure on ourselves to get it right each time straight away, don't we? And actually, the only way you we learn do. is from doing it, doing it, doing it. Um, from doing it. But, and make, make sure that you match, you know, the, the, the gauge of your thread to the gauge of the, the, the cloth in your garment. Me measure the, you know, marry up the interlining with the weight of the fabric. So make sure you, you know, you're working with compatible yeah. um, materials. But I have to say, sense. Carol... I had so much fun making it when it was laying out and I was going, oh, what's going to be the front? I'm putting my pattern piece on the front and going, oh, yeah, do I want the floral bit there? Oh, no. So it was a, a really nice thing to do. So viewers, if you get a chance to upcycle a tablecloth that you got lying around, go for it because... The, 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 there was extra creativity that was allowed to come out doing it, isn't there? 
Yes, and there was high praise for that. It poured in in the comment section. Yeah, story. I really. I answered really so many comments from people that yeah. said that they they loved the shirt. It was dazzling, and they they all want to try to make one themselves. Um, Where they're going to find such an exquisite piece of embroidery work, though? Well, I'm living. Go go into your if you've still got grandparents if you or your your, your mother uh, in there or your or your father go up in the loft start digging out yeah. go to those blanket boxes mm. delve mm. down you never know or go mm. around to a local charity shop or one of these vintage mm. thrift shops or a trip down to Portobello Road Market Carol Camden Town mm. sure sure oh believe me I'm on the lookout. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go into uh, the pattern challenge then and let's take a look at everyone's um, breakfast at Tiffany's dress as it were, as they coined it uh, and take a look at that. Where are we? So we've seen what they were told to be making. That was the, the live picture of it. And we'll go through alphabetically as is best. Um, to do so let's get rid of that and let's go to asthma first so that's asthma's mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. uh, um, everything she's doing now is just beautifully sewn isn't it um, absolutely yeah and, and this then, is it we talked about how tricky the challenge yeah. is so in all the lines in her dress are so clean and again i i i saw in that long side scene i saw well, we talked about before this rhythm of pucker, you know, where it's, it's just every four or five inches you have another pucker, yeah. and um, on that side seam, and you know that the we heard that that could have been pressed out. Well, it's very difficult to press that out, but uh, I thought that oh, was interesting. This is this is Patrick's informal term, the bouncy seam, the bouncy seam, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's puckering. It's uneven. You, you, you're stretching one side or feeding in one side yeah. more fabric than the other. And that's what causes these ripples or the puckers. It's an imbalance in the length of cloth given a segment, you know, and that's, so that's, that's, that, that's how purely that down out. to time. If, if the sewer is going mm -hmm. slower and not rushing, that won't happen. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that right? Maybe. And pinning more using more pins and making sure that it's level. When you start at the top of a seam, make sure that everything matches down to the bottom of the seam. And you yeah. can take a quick measurement of your pieces. You know, you can go run back to your pattern and say, ah, that outside seam should be 40 inches. So yeah. then you can check all four of your side seams, the front, two front and the two back, make sure they all are cut to 40 inches and then pin along the way. That's one way to make sure that you you can avoid that, that the puckering in the seams. What about, if I may ask, because I know I've done this a couple of times, um, doing like one seam, uh, sewing together, but on a, on a basting stitch, a really long stitch that's hidden in the seam allowance. So you could, to get your first, like a first swing at it, and then, yep, yes. I've got that. That's that's level at the bottom as yep. well. I've got. I started at the top. Mm -hmm. I've now got to the bottom. It's level. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I can now go back and redo that seam properly mm -hmm. at the proper mm -hmm. sewing needle stitch length and doing it properly. Yes. And the other thing you can do, Stuart, that's a very good idea. Say, sew your basting stitch at a quarter of an inch on the longest stitch you have on your machine. Yep. Uh, so so that take another measure. Yeah. And then I would press it. I would press it flat, not opened, oh. but I would press it flat and then just coax the two layers together, then take any rippling out yeah. and then sew it at the proper seam allowance and then get rid of your basting stitch and then press your seam open. Yeah. Um, again, it's just, it's a little bit of preparation. It doesn't actually take all that long to do it. And yeah. it saves, it saves that slight inaccuracy. Oh, in things. and... We also call it, uh, for other parts, the stay stitch. I have learned so much mm -hmm. about that procedure. Mm -hmm. And actually, yes, you're putting 10, 15 minutes to do the stay stitch first. But actually, when you come to that neckline 
uh, and you've been mm -hmm. manipulating that garment doing the arms or the back or the side, you'll be amazed at how much that neckline could have shifted and grown. But if you put that stay stitch at the beginning or wherever, it mm -hmm. saves so much time because you don't have to repeat anything or redo anything, do you? That's absolutely right. Absolutely spot on. But it's funny, isn't it? Because sometimes people, all they want to do is sew. And it's like, well, yes, but you are kind of sewing if you put your stay stitch in. Um, and yes, it is, mm -hmm. what, five minutes, 10 minutes to do. But actually, you think of the mistakes that can happen when you don't do that. So it's, it saves time in the long run in a roundabout way. But it's, yes, that was one of the things yeah. I learned from you very early on that is an important step mm. that has such an impact on your mm -hmm. final work. You're making preparation all along the way and you're, you, people want to get to the end of the project. Well, you're going to get there, aren't you? But Absolutely. you want to get there with the most accurate version of yeah. what you can do with your skill set. And, and all these things that we're talking about, they add a little bit of time. But while you're doing a stay stitch, you're thinking about what, what happens next. You're not running into it. So you're That's... always, you're always you're preparing and getting yeah. to know the whole job. Let's take a look at Lauren's front. Now, Lauren had this this fabric that um, Patrick kept calling uh, peached. I don't understand what he means by that. Do you know that term or what I, he's? No, it was it was a, it had a brushed finish. It it R had yes. um you know maybe maybe a like nap, a chamois maybe leather. <laughs> yes, yeah, something like that. Something like that. It had a texture about yeah. it, which which gave it a matte finish. Um, nothing wrong with that and she, no? she did a fair job at it she did have some problems with the zip didn't she oh, if i remember yeah. correctly yeah and that yeah. looks like she had a couple of maybe the seam allowance wasn't worked out and then when she bagged it in the burrito she's got some puckering on both yeah. the upper and the lower uh runs there yeah my yes. heart went as soon I as she's I, I, she was ripping it. The only, oh, I can't do anything. I can't get yeah. it out. I'm just going to have to rip. And it's like, oh, no, God, something might go terribly yes. wrong. Yes, yeah, she might create holes in the garment by yeah. ripping it out. And, yeah. and then she'll certainly stretch the side that she's tearing yeah. out. She'll stretch it. So then lining it up is going to be more difficult. But that I think this is certainly with, a, with that unrealistic time uh, frame that yeah. they had of four hours or whatever. Yeah, It's just... The whole thing is panic stations, <laughs> yeah. you know, and with and with slippery cloth. Uh, let's take a look at Mia's, and there's Mia's. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know how it's it's difficult when you're looking at it in this light, but I noticed something about Mia's dress, and I wanted to talk about it, highlight it, and maybe spend a minute on it, and then we okay. can maybe come back to this and expand on it later. But it looked to me like the outer dress the bodice was taller than the lining it looked oh, like we had some horizontal bagging going on yeah. there, uh, which means that maybe her lining was short and i thought this this happens a lot and i pre prepared a little a little Ooh. sample if we could go to yeah um, indeed we uh, can <laughs> okay so let's Ooh, have a look i yeah. made yeah so here's, you'll all recognize this. We've got the front bodice with the bust dart, the back bodice section with the back dart. Um, and this was to be sewn together and then lined, fully lined. Yeah. And then the zip was inserted in the side and then they wanted you to put the lining in by hand, okay? So I cut this out. I just got the front, that's all time would allow. There's my front bodice. With the darts, you can see this great sculpture that we have here. Yeah. Okay. There we go. How does that look? Yes, that looks lovely. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Then I made up Crystal using clear. the same, yeah, using the same pattern piece. Yeah. I made my lining. Okay. Okay. Then I went to the board and I pressed the darts in. You yeah. Know, because that's the next stage. And I gave it a good press. Now I'm going to line it. However, Look what happens. Here's something that's very tricky about lining. And it happens, you'll notice, with a high street garment. I'm going to pin this together. And the, and the two pieces are exactly the same, the lining and the pattern yep. piece. The yep. lining is the same. But when I try to line this up, just in, in pressing it, 
the lining has come out short. Yeah. You can see even in the cross chest. You see how yeah. much shorter the lining is. Now let's go. Let's go to the length in the front. If I match up the front, can we see? No, mm. we can't. Yeah. Can we see how much shorter? Shorter. Yeah, yeah. You see? Yeah. Very good. So when you go to line the garment in, let's go to the other side. When you go to line the garment in, and if you turn in the seam allowance oh and you try to apply that if you try to apply that where it would line up on the yeah. inside of the garment then you're going to be this short on the top oh let's see does it need rendering yeah sometimes sometimes it's there and sometimes it's slow but we can still yeah. see yeah you can still see again Stuart, i just wanted to spend a minute on that yeah. to show you that you can be working with two different fabrics and one can shrink in the pressing at a different rate to your main fabric. Oh, how do you then, okay. how do you then deal with that? So, well, you would have to cut a new lining uh, because, right. because, or you'd have to trim, you would have to trim your outer yeah. fabric to meet the lining. So you'd have to redraw, so you'd lose some cross chest. But many people... Okay, so that's that. Yeah. But I suppose on the B, they're not going to do that because of time, are they? And I'm just trying to think, if I was, if I was doing that, I would just think, oh, I can fix it when I sew it together. That'll, that'll still work, but actually it won't, will it? Because mm -hmm. you'll then technically get what Mia then got, I presume. Yes, yes. Now, it's not that pronounced, but I think no. when she turned her lining up to, to sew it onto that waist seam, okay, even if you take a deeper seam allowance, so if you're, if you're not exact when you turn up, when you, 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 know, you make your yeah. facing on the lining and then you're hand stitching it around. So you really want to make sure your lining is just a bit bigger where it needs to be bigger. And one of those areas is in the length because oh. lining will shrink will shrink in the length and it will draw everything up sometimes you see a, a, a chap walking around in a suit coat that's been oh. dry cleaned a couple of times yeah. and you can see that that back panel is yeah. you know it's being taken up you know shorter than the hemline because of that because of the lining and and, and how much it's shrunk oh brilliant brilliant point okay, carol so thank you that's Let's move on to Tony. Uh, okay. Let's have a look at Tony's, Tony Beanie. Uh, where is Tony's there? Yes, I really I... like this uh, rendition. I thought it was superb. Yeah. I really like the placement, the choice of cloth, the placement. His gathers at the waist are so delicate. He's pressed it very well. He did, he did such a good job on this. And we've seen this fabric before, has, haven't we? Because absolutely. Asimov's fabric. Uh, Asma had it in week one for her cutout with the the, the the you know the twist top at the front, and that's his, right. And that's there's right. his now back. And again, yeah. it's it's always yeah. on that left sleeve, uh, isn't it? That left shoulder. Yeah. The ripple. Isn't that interesting? I wonder. Yeah. That was obviously yes. the bit with the burrito method, isn't it? Pulling out. Um, that's what's happened, that's how what's, it happens. Yeah. Now. I know Tony had the same fabric for the lining as as the uh, rather than a, mm -hmm. a you know a, a solid. What's happened there? Is that the lining? Yes. Is that the bottom coming it's, up? Yes. So it it could be that he just didn't pull pull that seam to the edge before he pressed it. Ah. It could have been a time thing. Yes. Um, yeah. It, you know, it could be that it's perfectly sewn, but when he when it came time to pressing, he just he um, on the left side, you've got a very clean edge, so yes, something went wrong, and I I, I think that was probably a time uh -huh. factor, um, and then he understitched the wrong side, didn't he? He understitched yes the this bit here lining side, yeah yes yes. So, I mean, it, it's a fair point that maybe using 
the same fabric to line the garment does confuse things a little yeah. bit. Um, but my guess is that probably wasn't a factor. I think time was a factor more than anything in this challenge. And let's finish off as we're going through alphabetically with Vicky. Where's Vicky's one there and there? Mm -hmm. Now, out of all of them that we've seen, so uh, uh, not including asthmas, that bodice, there's no bagging or rippling. No at all is there no. that looks stunning doesn't it none at all this is such a beautiful choice of cloth and again she used the same cloth to line it and she yeah. didn't run into those problems um i thought this was really one of the probably the most striking number um it, it's tricky with a print because you're you're kind of copying a little black dress so you want a mm. monochrome color but i think that this was great fun lovely choice of cloth um, and again, the same problem that everyone had, really. Nobody yeah. escaped this. No. Hmm. How did her zip look? Do we have a... I, I couldn't we get a another a shot. No, it was, it was mm -hmm. too close. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, I think it was good. Because where, uh, where did she come? Let's go to my, my notes. Let's have a look at the... Mm -hmm. I've got a group. Let's go to the group shot, actually. Uh, there. Uh, it looks might be better. Let's have a look. Uh, asthma was first. Mia was second. Vicky was third. Tony fourth, and Lauren fifth. So. Hmm. Okay. Oh, and Tony had sewn the lining in by machine instead of by hand. Yes. Yeah. So that knocked him down because actually, when you look at this lineup, the print dresses look a lot more um, successful than the plain colors. Absolutely. Yes. Mm. Mm. And actually, yeah, and I know it, it's the satin, but you can see the 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 rippling and the puckering there. Quite. It's probably because the light Clearly. is shining on it. Yeah. 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 Quite clearly. Mm -hmm. And the same with Mia's, that satin. You can see yeah. every pucker. It's very tricky to sew a plain color in a satin like that. The light catches everything. Oh, and we've talked about light and what it does to fabric, um, especially if you're, mm -hmm. you know, if you're making a garment for a certain uh, occasion, you want to try and think about the light of that occasion and the light of, mm -hmm. is it an mm -hmm. event? Are you on stage? Are there going to be, you know, special lights on? Is it outside in a summer's mm -hmm. evening? All these things play a part on, on the overall yeah. look, yeah. don't they? <clears throat> and you know that from your work in theatre, mm. you know, where stage lighting does different things than, than natural yeah. lights and different kinds of light, different colours yeah. of light. So, yeah. And when you've got that very long scene, this is where the fabric choice is really crucial because and the preparation for that scene because that is the longest run that the eye is going to have to cope with yeah the smaller bits and pieces the smaller sections you can get away with a little bit more when you've got that long outside scene that's when you really have to prepare for how you're going to how you're going to make that scene work and how the light's going to affect it Oh, as always, I love our chats. <laughs> it's you know, and and, I, and our viewers do too, because there aren't many times where you, and certainly on YouTube, where you can put a program on and hear people talking about the craft that you love. You know, there are loads of other topics on YouTube and uh, sure, sure. shows on television, but not much about sewing. Um, so when the sewing bee's on and we get our chance to talk even more about it and analyse it, talk about techniques, talking about fabric and, you know, like we just then light on fabric and how it affects the look. It's just lovely. And I know the viewers really appreciate it, Carol, your time that you give up because you are giving up your time. You were rushing around London today. You, you were saying, what were you doing today? Can you tell us? I was rushing around in the pouring rain and that was awkward because I had two deliveries to make. So you're juggling a, an umbrella and your garment bags and, and 
all your bits and pieces and just trying to stay steady and everybody's rushing around and then and yeah. then my last client today said let's have lunch and and i i, I met him at a restaurant and let's get a bottle of wine and i thought oh, oh dear. well <laughs> well why not why but, not and but it, you know it, it is all about relaxing with the work yeah. and it you know, it, it came in that form today. So I was rushing around. It was a Friday trying to get everything done. And this, let's just take the edge off. Have yeah. a seat. <laughs> let's sit down. <laughs> and when we talk about sewing, because you brought up a good point, um, we have more time. And you, yeah. you're not talking about just how to put a zip in, but you're sharing other people's um, experiences. Everybody but you know, puts their tips in the chat. Yeah, and yeah. it relaxes the conversation. Yeah. It relaxes the pressure. Yeah. you know that you're under when you're sewing and you're trying to do these tricky things so it is good to talk about it and slow oh. down uh, mm -hmm. yes and enjoy it so viewers thank you very much for watching and i know you know you love it so uh mm -hmm. yes there we are that's week eight that's the quarter finals mm -hmm. with our look at mm -hmm. the lining invisible zips um two more shows to go the semi-final and the final and as i said next week um we'll have more information mm -hmm. about future master classes with carol mm -hmm. if you want to get mm -hmm. involved then we'll have more information mm -hmm. uh, next week so when the sewing bee finishes mm -hmm. and we stop this this wonderful chat we'll be able to carry it on with projects now as i say they'll mm -hmm. they'll be they'll be private they won't be live on youtube for everyone to see so uh, the masterclass is a, a it's like a, a special little sewing group, isn't it, Carol? Per per that's masterclass. Right. That's right. Yes, that's right. And instead of the tips on how to do things, we're going to take you through the technique. This is my aim. I'd like to see, you know, I'd like to see a set of classes where we maybe we don't make something, but maybe we really explore and go into what can go wrong, how to avoid mistakes, how to keep your sewing as accurate as you can. And then you can go away and take your time yeah. and put these things into practice. And uh, we, we, we see if we can, you know, get, get better at this but together. The, top, the topics, mm. if it works, the topics are going to be endless, really. Masterclass with Carol, mm -hmm. signing up mm -hmm. and, and getting mm -hmm. involved. Um, as I say, the first one, I know I'm going to be there too. So more in <laughs> You have more to be there, Stuart. You have to <laughs> more Oh, thank you. More information next week. But there we go. That's week eight, quarterfinals. Two more weeks to go of our, our mm -hmm. wonderful sewing chat of, of whatever mm -hmm. comes up in the sewing bee. Uh, I don't even know what it is next week because I think I was too busy mm -hmm. texting Ting at the end. So I don't even know what the theme is next week. So that, that's going to be a great <laughs> surprise. So as always, look forward to seeing you next week and for our little chat, Carol. Thanks very much for your time, okay. everyone. And we will see you next week. Cheers, Carol. Bye-bye. Thanks, Stuart. Bye, everyone.